What's up guys, I'm Mavs here and today we're looking at formula and we're really going to be focused on rearranging formula because this is where a lot of students have um, problems. So we're asked to make x a subject. Now what does that mean? It means basically we want x equals in our answer. So x equals and then whatever. So to do that what we do is we put lines down either side of the equals and we've got to figure out how to get x on its own. So looking at this, that minus 2, we need to get rid of that, and it will just leave x. So to get rid of a take away 2, we've got to do the inverse, or the opposite of take away 2. Well, the inverse, or opposite of take away 2, is plus 2. So we have plus 2 both sides. And so on the left-hand side, we've now got y plus 2, because y plus 2 is y plus 2. And on the right side here, we have x. Now, it doesn't matter which way around we have um, things in an equal sign, so I'm just going to swap these around the other way. And there we go, we have x equals y plus 2. We'll do the same with this next one, and this is a formula. This is the circumference of a circle. And this time we need to make d the subject. Now, the thing that's stopping d from being insane, and I might just write, draw this a little bit bigger so we can see. So we've got c equals pi times d. Now, the thing that's stopping d from being on its own is that pi. But what is that pi doing to the d? Well, that pi is timesing the d. Okay, so it's a times pi. So to get rid of a times pi, well, what's the opposite of multiplying by pi? Well, it's going to be dividing by pi. So what we're going to do is divide by pi both sides. Now, I could leave this as c divided by pi equals d, and that's absolutely fine, but uh, it's more common not to use the divide sign. Um, as you as you go further in maths, you, you use the divide sign less and less. Instead, we write this as c over pi. It means the same thing, absolutely the same thing. Again, we can just swap this around the other way, like this. So our answer is d equals c divided by or over pi. Now, if you wrote divide by pi, you'd still get uh, the uh, marks, but try and get in the habit of writing it as a fraction, because if the question has a fraction in it, you'll know that that means divide. The first um, part of Edexcel's question, you're just asked to substitute. So it says, um, find the value of t when v equals 2. So we know that t equals 4 times v, but if v is 2, it's going to be 4 times 2. I'm going to put that in brackets because Bidmas says we've got to do that bit first. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3. So t is 8 plus 3, which is 11. So t equals 11. Now question B is a little bit more tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out. So t equals 4v plus 3. And we've got to make v the subject. So we're going to put our lines in. And we can't get there straight away because there's a couple of things we need to deal with. We need to deal with that 4 there, and we need to deal with that plus 3 there. So what are we going to deal with first? Well, the rule generally, and there are exceptions, but if you have a plus or a minus, get rid of that first. So it's like the opposite of bid mass. So the things at the bottom of bid mass do first, or get rid of first. So how are we going to get rid of that plus 3? We'll do the inverse, which is take away 3. And so we've got t minus 3 equals 4v. Now, what is that 4 doing to the v? Well, it's a times 4, because it's next to it. It's timesing it by 4. So to get rid of it, we need to divide by 4. So on the right-hand side, this is easy, because it's just going to be v. But the left-hand side is not so easy. Well, what I see some students do sometimes is t minus 3 divided by 4. That will not give you any marks, I'm afraid. It won't give you um, the two marks for the question. When you divide a side by a 4, say, you've got to divide the whole thing. So what I could do is put brackets around the t minus 3 and then divide by 4. But a much easier way of doing it is just putting it all over 4, like that. So our answer is v equals t minus 3 all over 4. Well, and finally our AQA question, so similar question, 
but this time we have a fraction in it, which shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to start off by putting my lines in, either side of the equal sign. So the rule was to get rid of any pluses or minuses first, um, unless they're trapped in brackets or fractions or anything. But that plus 9 is just sitting there and it's ready to get rid of. So we're going to get rid of that plus 9 by taking away 9 both sides. And so on the left hand side we've just got y minus 9. On the right hand side we've still got that fraction. Okay, what does that part there mean? Well, it, over 3 means divided by 3. So how do we get rid of it? We have times both sides by 3. So we have times left and right hand side by 3. Now remember, when you multiply or divide by like a side by something, it has to be the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything on the left uh, so on the left hand side in brackets and we're going to times it all by 3. Okay, you can't just times the y or the not or the minus 9 by 3. And obviously we're left with x there. Um, so for my answer, I could write x equals and then 3 brackets y minus 9. Or you could expand it. Um, so you could write y equals uh, 3y minus 27. Um, now, there's no need to expand it on this. There's nothing in the question that requires you to expand the bracket. And I would even argue not to. Um, not because you wouldn't get the mark. You definitely would still get the mark. But you would definitely get the mark with the bracket there. So why bother doing an extra step that you might make a mistake when you can just leave it with brackets. Remember, when it says rearrange, it means get x equals, so get x on its own, which we've done. There's no requirement to get rid of that bracket. So, little piece of advice there, maybe. Well, I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, please click like. If you want to see more from us, we release videos every single weekday, Monday to Friday, at nine o'clock in the morning. So just click subscribe and click the bell icon to make sure you're up to date with all the latest videos. Um, if you want to see even more from us, go to our website on maths.com, which I'm sure you have already. If you haven't, there's packed full of free maths resources to help you out. Um, and there will be a magical link that appears above the video now. Keep your comments coming in for ideas of videos for us to do after we finish our summer school series. We've, we've got a few already, so just keep them coming in, and they're really useful. It's nice to hear from you as well. Otherwise, thank you very much, and we'll see you on Monday. Oh, <laughs>